Hi, in this beginner's tutorial, I'll show you how to use Cloudflare workers. We will build a simple website visitor counter. Every time the home page is accessed, the visitor counter is increased. Cloudflare workers provide a serverless execution environment that allows you to create server-side applications. First, start by selecting the workers and pages option. Select create application. Make sure you're in the worker section. Then select create worker. Give your worker a name. The code preview shows the initial JavaScript code we are given to start our worker with. Select deploy. Now select the edit code option. In this panel, we can edit the JavaScript for our worker. Use the send option to make test requests to our worker without having to deploy the code. This panel shows the raw data returned. If we select the preview option, we can see how the worker response will look in the browser. We can also output information from our worker to the console panel by adding the command console.log. This is useful for debugging our JavaScript as it does not affect the output sent to the browser. Okay, let's start coding our visitor worker. We need to count each visitor. So let's add a variable for our counter. Let's call it visitor. Each time a request is made to our worker, we need to increment the visitor counter by one. We can now change the worker response to send the visitor information to the browser. We can see the worker response now shows the visitor information. Selecting send to make requests to the worker now increments the visitor counter response returned to the browser. If we open the workers.dev link in the browser, we don't see our visitor information. This is because we have not deployed our worker code. Let's return to our worker and select the save and deploy option. And once more save and deploy. If we now select the workers.dev link, we now get the correct response. Each time we refresh the page, our visitor count increases. This implementation seems to work, but it has a major problem. The visitor counter is not truly persistent. So the visitor variable will get reset to zero. Cloudflare offer a number of methods to enable workers to store persistent information, such as persistent objects and a variety of data stores. Let's go back to the Workers and Pages menu. Select Workers and Pages. Now we can see the data store options. In this tutorial, we will use a key value pair store. Select the KV option. We can use this to store application data for our worker. Select Create a Namespace. Give your namespace a name. Select Add to create the namespace. Now we have our key value pair store. We now need to select View. Here we can add the values we wish to store. Under key, let's enter the name. We will use to access the stored data. I will use visitor as it describes what it stores and give it an initial value of one. Now select add entry. To access this stored data from a worker, we need to bind this name space with our worker. Select workers and pages, then select the worker. That needs access to the key value pair name space. Select Settings, followed by the Variables option. Scroll down to the section called KV Namespace Bindings. Select Add Binding. From the KV Namespace drop-down, choose the namespace that contains our visitor data. Under Variable Name, enter a name we can use to access this namespace from our worker. Now select Save and Deploy. Now we can update the worker to use the namespace values. Select Workers and Pages. Select our worker, Visitors. Select the Quick Edit button. Let's add a new variable called Counter. Let's add a new variable called V for our namespace visitor value. We must use the Await method. As we will be making a synchronous function call, we use the NV parameter of the Fetch function to access our name space and use the get method with the name of the key we wish to read, visitor. The value returned is a string. So we must convert it into an integer using parseInt. Now we can output the result to the console panel using console.log. Now select the send button to test the code. 
we can see the console output matches the initial value we entered. When we created the name space, we can now increment the count by one for each request. Now we must update the name space visitor key with the new value. Again, we will start with the await function as we will be making a synchronous function call. This time we use the put method to update the namespace key, using the key name visitor and the argument count, which we must convert to a string. Clear the console and select the send button to test the worker. Each time we press send the console output increments by one. However, the browser preview panel is showing the wrong value. We simply need to remove the visitor variables and update the response to use the count variable. Now, if we select the send button, the browser and console are showing the correct value. We can now save and deploy our visitor counter worker. At the start of this tutorial, I showed you the visitor counter displayed as animated numbers. We will update the worker code to convert the visitor counter into graphical images. Here you can see I have created images for each number from 0 to 9, as well as an animated version using WebP files. I will upload all these images to a Cloudflare Pages site, so they can be accessed from the internet. You can watch my Cloudflare Pages tutorial. If you want to know more about using Cloudflare Pages, once all the images have uploaded, we can deploy the site. We can now access each image number from a browser by updating the URL. Let's return to the visitor worker code. We will add a new function to the worker called count to image. This function will convert each digit of the visitor count into individual HTML image tags with URLs. I'll add a variable that has the URL address of my number images. I will add a token named digit to the URL to indicate where the image name needs to be inserted. We now need to convert the count to a string. We will use a for loop to read each digit from the string count variable. To test the loop, we will use console.log to output each character from the string. We'll call this function from the worker's main fetch function and use the visitor count as an argument. The console output now shows each digit from the visitor count. Let's update the code to output the image URL and replace the token with the image number name. The console output now shows the URL address for each image. Now let's create the HTML that we will send to the browser. Let's add a new variable called HTML to hold our response and update the image URL to include the image HTML tag. Now from inside the for loop, we add each image URL to our HTML response. At the end of our function, we return the HTML created in our for loop from the worker fetch function. We can now get the returned value of the count to images function and use it as the response data. The browser preview now shows the HTML, but we're not seeing any images as the browser is not parsing the response. To fix this, we need to add a header to tell the browser that the response data is type HTML. Now we use the header variable as an argument for the response function. The HTML data is now getting parsed and the browser preview displays our images. To change the size of our numbers, we simply need to add a width attribute to the image tag. Each time we make our request, the visitor count increments, and the images are updated. It is also simple to change the images used. By updating the URL address, I will change the image URL to point to my animated images. This worker converts the visitor count to HTML markup, however, this conversion can be done by the browser. Let's modify our code so we can control what type of data the worker returns, either the HTML markup or just the visitor count. We will use the query string to pass information to our worker. If the request URL ends with type equals HTML, we will respond with the HTML markup, else we will respond with the visitor count value. 
Let's now save and deploy. And then select the workers.dev link to test the worker. Here we can see that the worker is returning, just the visitor count value. Now let's add the query string type equals HTML to the worker URL. The HTML markup is returned and the images are displayed. If we remove the query string or set the type to something other than HTML, the worker returns the count. To finish off this tutorial, I will create an example HTML page that uses the worker. First, let's create a basic index.html page. I will add an image tag to display my visitor number graphic. Next, I will use the object tag. With the data set to the visitor count worker URL and the query string set to type equals HTML, and I will add a short thank you text message as the last div tag. Now we can preview our page in the browser. Let's go back to our index.html and create a more interesting design. I will use a style sheet to lay out the visitor information and add the IDs to the div tags. I will also add a background image. Now when we go back to the browser, this layout looks a lot nicer. And when we reload the page, we can see that the worker is still working correctly. To finish off this tutorial, let's update our HTML to request only the visitor count value and do the conversion to images in the browser using JavaScript. Let's add a script tag and use a self-executing function so our code only runs when the HTML page is loaded and ready. We will copy the count to image function from our worker and paste the code into our HTML page. To request the visitor count from the worker, we will add a new function named getVisitor and create an instance of a XML HTTP request object. An XHR object is used to retrieve data from a server using a URL. We need to add the event listener on ready state change. To our instance of XHR to catch the server response, we also need to check if the server response is OK before we use the return data. Now we call our count to image function. With the response text as the argument, this will return the count value as HTML markup. We use the document get element by ID method to get the page element that will be assigned the visitor HTML markup and use XHR open to create a server request. But this time we will not add a query string to the URL. As we want the worker to return just the count value, xhr.send is used to start the actual server request. This function is now complete. We simply need to call it from the main function. We no longer need the object tag, so let's remove it. Instead, we will use the div tag to display our visitor HTML markup by adding the ID visitor to it. When we reload the page, something is wrong. We're not seeing the visitor count. Let's open the debug tools. The debug console shows the request was blocked by the core's policy. Let's go back to the visitor worker code and fix the error. We need to update the header to include access control allow origin. For now, we will allow all origins by using asterisk. Save and deploy the worker. If we reload our HTML page, we now see the visitor count. The advantage of converting the visitor count in our index.html is we can now update the page layout without having to modify the worker. Thanks for watching my beginner's tutorial. I hope to do an advanced worker tutorial in the future. Thanks again. Like and subscribe to Chainmakes.